Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. Um, hard enough, I look off to the right. I'm just going to read a couple of things logistically before we get started with the bulk of, um, of today's programming. So first of all, welcome and congratulations to everybody here. Um, welcome to BC's class of 2025. Uh, this panel today is hopefully going to give you the necessary information to make your decision as to whether you're going to be joining us in the fall. Um, so I'm joined here by four great panelists and we're, we're here to discuss um, the Ahana Plus student experience on campus. So this session today is going to be recorded and the recording will be available, let's say the beginning of next week, it usually takes a few days to get processed. Um, but if you arrived late or you want to rewatch anything, um, if you're thinking of a specific answer, you can go to the admitted students page, uh, click on the video gallery and all admitted students webinars will be hosted there. Um, these, this series sort of started April 1st. Um, so You'll have a lot, a big library to look uh, into and rewatch. Um, so those can all be found there. Uh, in terms of logistics, the Q&A function is open and that's how we're gonna be functioning for the majority of the panel. So you can feel free to start tossing in questions there. Um, the chat has been disabled, so all communications will go through that, uh, that route. Uh, additionally, we also have a few members of the um, Office of Undergraduate Admissions staff behind the scenes who are going to be moderating the chat for any more specific questions or um, anything that we as students might not be equipped to answer. Uh, so don't really feel like feel free not to hold back in terms of any questions that you're going to be asking. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give a quick introduction to myself, then I'm going to hand it over to the panelists and we can kick off. So my name is Aiden Henderson. I'm a current senior. Uh, I'm studying environmental studies with a concentration in sociology in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I also have a minor in music. Um, on campus, I'm the co-president of the Black Student Forum. I'm the AHANA Plus Outreach Coordinator for the Student Admissions Council um, within the uh, Office of Undergraduate Admissions. And yeah, uh, what else am I missing? Other than that, I'm, a, I'm attending law school. I'm gonna be going to the Boston University Law School next year. So. Um, that gives a little snapshot into me. Um, yeah, so for introductions, I think I'm going to pass it to Justin. Awesome. Thank you, Aiden. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Justin Smith. I'm a Birmingham, Alabama native. I'm a current freshman here at BC studying political science in the process of switching over to a Lynch School of Education major, preferably applied psych. Uh, on campus, I am involved in our uh, undergraduate student government. I serve as a freshman representative, and I am also continuing my activism and entrepreneurial endeav endeavorments. Hi, how are you guys? My name is Langston Swafford. I am a senior English major minoring in management and leadership. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, on campus, I am over the past four years, I have served as a, a what's the term, um, an e-board member, executive board member of Dedicated Intellectuals of the People or DIOP, which is basically a AHANA. AHANA is an, is an acronym that we use to describe um, people of color. Um, AHANA male support group, essentially, for um, male students who, um, who are trying to adjust to BC and who are also just trying to you know, have a positive experience and have positive role models and positive um, friendly environments of, of men that look like them. So I was an executive board member of that. I, I was an, a finalist for the Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship last year, which is essentially a prestigious scholarship awarded to students who um, exemplify both academic excellence and um, service within the black community on, on both on and off, off campus. Um, and I'm also currently a member of the Gamma chapter of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. And yeah, I'm sweatshirt. <laughs> and I'll pass it on to Annie. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Annie Z. I am a senior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, double majoring in economics and computer science. And I'm originally from McLean, Virginia, so uh, Washington, D.C. suburbs. 
In terms of extracurriculars, one of my biggest is actually related to this panel that you're watching right now. Um, I'm the tours coordinator in the student admissions program, so I work with Aiden quite a bit this year, actually. Um, and then besides that, I do a lot of service work on campus. Uh, one of my favorites is Boston College Neighborhood Center tutoring program. Um, and there's some other big service programs here at BC that I've been involved in as well, such as For Boston um, and one of my favorite clubs that I joined actually freshman year is also an Ahana centric club called the Ahana Management Development Program. So it was for Ahana students who are interested in business and you join as a freshman, they're two upperclassmen leads. Um, they'll talk to you about, you know, what it's like to enter the business world um, as an Ahana student, as um, and besides that, they'll bring you to different networking events and host uh, different social events for you on campus. So those have been some of my favorite extracurriculars over my past four years. Hi everyone, my name is Angie. I'm a freshman at BC. I'm double majoring in international studies and MCAS and then finance with a co-concentration managing for the social good in CSOM. I, am involved in CLC, which is um, Christian Life Community, the Dominican Association of Boston College, Women in Business, um, and the Latin American Business Club on campus. Great, yeah, so I just wanted to point everybody's attention uh, once again to the Q&A function, which is where we're gonna be working out of. Um, so while we wait for those questions to go in, I know that our four panelists have thrown out a various uh, mix of involvements, but um, for a panel that's on community and involvement, I was wondering if we could each start off by maybe three of you or all of you saying um, sort of when you got to BC, one of the first places you, you that you really found your community um, and how that has influenced sort of where you progressed from there. I know we have two first year students on there or on here, so they're gonna be able to talk about their most recent experiences, but um, I think that would be a great place to start. I can start us off. Um, I think that when I came to Boston College, I was very nervous because coming from Virginia, I didn't know anyone here. Um, there was one girl from my high school who came here with me and I didn't really know her at all. So I was very nervous about finding a community. I wasn't really sure how to do that. I think something that really helped me was going to the Student Involvement Fair, which we host uh, every single September. It's actually one of the first weeks of school. And it's basically just an event where all of our different clubs and organizations will set out tables outside on Stokes Lawn and basically target all the freshmen and try to get them to join their clubs. So you have music groups, dance groups, um, performing arts, uh, Ahana, uh, culture clubs, um, so many different groups. I think we have about 300 of them. And so you can just walk through all the different tables and you know pick up flyers, put your emails down. And I mentioned earlier um, the HANA Management Development Program, which I joined freshman year. And it's basically just because I walked by that table and you know they talked to me and I put my email down and that's how I joined. But I think freshman year, that was a really great way for me to meet people because they would host events that we would all go to. And it was almost like, like forced mingling, like you just have to talk to people and you have to go to these events and it's really uncomfortable at first, but it's the best way to meet people when you first come to campus, right? It's uh, joining these sorts of clubs. Um, so in my personal experience, that's what kind of set me off in the beginning. That's how I started off as a freshman. And then over the course of my years, I slowly found my friends through other clubs and it's really just like a process. So I'd say, you know, don't be afraid. It is a process. It's okay to not know, you know, what you're doing. Uh, just come to campus, you know, go to the involvement fairs and um, see where you end up. Yeah, I can echo that. Um, everything Annie said, like, for, well, for me, um, I kind of got an idea of where I would be, like, I would find my friends and find my niche. Um, early on, I was in a program um, called Options Through Education or OTE, which is essentially a pre-freshman program um, designed for first gen, um, low income, people of color students. Um, not just not, you don't have to be all three of them. Um, a lot of times you may just be one of those three, um, but basically it's supposed to get you prepared for the rigors of Boston College um, through coursework that does count towards your freshman year. 
Um, and th- it was there that I began to meet some of my first friends at BC. And that actually is what got me to, um, I, I learned about the multicultural living experience floor or, or the MLE floor, which is where I lived my freshman year. And that's where I began to meet more of my friends. But um, to, to echo what Annie said, yes, yeah, student involvement, um, student involvement fair is definitely a place that people typically go to um, kind of see if their interests and their hobbies are reflected in the student body. And, um, you know, people typically make their friends off of similar interests or similar backgrounds, similar cultural backgrounds or uh, religious beliefs or things like that. So um, I highly suggest going to student involvement. And also, when you get here, just be very open, you know, and sometimes it's going to take a little bit of getting out of your comfort zone, but um, be open to meeting people in your residence hall, you know, that you may not know, you know, hopefully, God willing, COVID um, is not a factor next fall and you guys can have your door open and like just meet people on your floor. Um, but just always just be open to meeting people is how um, I think I was able to make the friend group that I have today. Piggybacking off of Langston, I also came in through the Options to Education program, but as a freshman, mine was virtual. So it was definitely very different um, because we didn't have that on campus environment. But I'm also a current resident of the multicultural learning experience, which is one of the living and learning communities um, that Res Life has as options for freshmen. And it's basically where you live with people who have similar interests um, in an environment that facilitates um, conversation about that specific interest. So um, when it came to living on the multicultural floor, it was most of us are students of color or female students of color being on the female floor. So it's definitely one of the best decisions I made coming into BC. Um, It's where I've made a lot of my friends. Um, Our community here is so much better than if I wouldn't have joined MLE coming in. So I would say that's definitely one of the transition, one of the things that helped with my transition to BC when it came to res life. And as similar to Langston and Angie, I came in as an OTE scholar this year alongside Angie. And, you know, a lot of things were different for us. Our uh, student involvement fair was virtual. So if I'm being quite honest, I I really didn't go. Uh, uh, And a lot of things were just different. So, you know, it was really up to us individually to get out, you know, and meet people, you know, try new things, explore new places. And me coming in from all the way down south over 1,200 miles away to a cold new place where all the people seemed kind of mean at first until you could really get to know them. You know, I was a, a quite bit nervous at first, but, you know, once you get out of your comfort zone and, you know, I'm a I'm currently a a part of the uh, Shaw Leadership Program, which is a LLC on the list of LLCs alongside the MLE floor and a couple of more other uh, learning and living communities that they have. But the Shaw Leadership House uh, allows ten girls and ten guys to live inside of a huge mansion on Upper Campus, where we basically tailor our leadership skills and learn how to become a better leader. So if I'm being quite honest, I kind of had a leg up on the social scene coming in because I came in OTE and because I was a part of the show leadership program. But that's why it's so important to step outside of your comfort zone, like Langston said, and try new things. You know, don't be afraid to sign up for different groups and programs and and fairs and all type of stuff that's going on, no matter if it's virtual or not, because you just may never know where it may lead you to and who you may meet. So don't be afraid. Great. Um, So we do have a question in the Q&A, it's for Langston. Um, So Elizabeth is wondering, uh, I thought BC doesn't have Greek life, which you would be correct about. Um, So Langston, she's wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about how you found that and what that has meant to you. Yeah, so... (laughs) I'll, I'll also tell this tell it by giving also a backstory. So, growing for me growing up, um, I'm from New Orleans, and New Orleans, as similar to Justin's environment, is the deep south. Um, and part of that is 
as far as at least for the African American community, Greek life is a big, a big part of it. Um, as part of the college experience. Um, and so growing up, I always saw, you know, as a kid, I saw Greek life. I saw alphas, kappas, my fraternity omegas, um, deltas, AKAs. I saw that growing up all the time. And so one of the things for me was if, if I even didn't decide to join Greek life, I wanted to at least be able to have it as something that as an arm length away, whether it be for social events or, you know, programming volunteer opportunities. I just always wanted to kind of have it in, in kind of in some kind of vicinity. And so when I was a senior in high school, uh, I don't know, uh, Howard Sing, uh, Mr. Singer is on the call, Howard's on the call. One of the things that Howard Singer told me when he visited my high school to um, get kids to be interested in Boston College is that, he said BC is a school that does not acknowledge Greek life. It doesn't have Greek life. However, there are certain chapters of Greek letter organizations in the city of Boston that represent multiple schools as opposed to just one school. And so that actually was one of the things that decided that that drew me into BC was the fact that I could have, it's this duality, right? It's this idea that you can have both a Catholic Jesuit education which is unique within itself. It's a very unique experience to be at a Jesuit Catholic school. I'm um, just with the amount of service opportunities and retreats that we have at our school that um, you know other institutions don't really have access to, but also having access to a Greek letter, Black Greek letter organization experience, um, the, the social events, the parties, the, the programming, the networking with other kids in the city of Boston. Um, I, I have fraternity brothers from Boston University and Harvard University, respectively, as of right now, as far as that are quote unquote on the yard right now. Um, so having that both of those things, access to both of those things were, um, are very beautiful things that Boston College can provide. And to answer your direct question about my chapter, so my chapter is, is Gamma Chapter of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. And essentially what Gamma Chapter is, like, like most Greek letter organizations in the city of Boston that are represented as far as at the undergraduate level, a lot of them are what's called citywide chapters, meaning that they don't just represent one school. It means that they take from all the different schools in the area. So like I said, we take from school, we take from Boston College, Boston University, uh, Harvard, Tufts, MIT, um, Northeastern, all any school, pretty much any school in the area we take from. And it's a beautiful experience because you get to not only, for me at least, and this is why Boston College is unique, you not only get to have the experience that, like I said, the Jesuit Catholic aspect of you and having your friends here, I also get to make friends with similar people who had similar Southern upbringings like me, um, or even just upbringings as Black people and people of color in general, and they go to different schools. And that's just broadens your network and that broadens your opportunities for internships. It broadens your opportunity for fun, to, for social things. Um, and it's just never a dull moment. You get to have experiences any and everywhere. And I think that that's one of the, the beautiful things that, um, that BC specifically, you know, that those two combinations can provide when put together. I hope that answers your question. Great. Uh, thank you, Lynx. That was, um, that was great. So we have another question uh, specifically about the MLE floor. Um, Kiana really wants to join the MLE floor. Um, Langston and Angie, do you have any advice for when they are applying? Angie, you can go first on this, on this one. Thanks. So um, when it comes to the application process, there's like an essay. Um, don't just write four sentences because that doesn't show that you're like interested in living with people who are from different cultures and who you can have those hard conversations with. Um, be very thoughtful in your response, I would say. And then um, apply early, not like at the last minute. Um, I would say also that. I, yeah, I would go with what Angie's saying, because I'm going to be honest, as a senior, I don't even remember exactly what the process was. Um, but yeah, those that advice, what Angie is saying, is pretty much prevalent, like relevant to anything that you that you apply for at Boston College. Um, be very direct and very specific on why you want to be and whatever you want to be. Um, and you know, always represent yourself in the best way and carry yourself in the best way in order to have a good shot at getting it. Um, I think I do remember, yeah, like just make sure at least for 
as I remember in the MLE um, application, yeah, just make sure you're specific as to why you think a multicultural learning experience is the best thing for you in your freshman year. Just be very specific and very intentional in that. Great. Um, so yeah, this was sort of brought up a little bit when Justin was speaking earlier, but I guess BC is a kind of place where you have this idea of what it is when you've never been here. And then it's kind of completely different once you actually get your feet on the ground and ex are experiencing it. And especially during COVID, that's kind of hard to do because if you're coming for a campus tour, it's very limited. Um, Ahana weekends virtual, you're not gonna like actually stay on campus. And so I just wanted to give the opportunity for a couple of panelists to talk about a misconception they had at Boston College and the experience that they had um, having that proven wrong or having their opinion shifted. I can start off. I think one um, idea of Boston College that I had when I came was that it is extremely white, extremely Catholic, and that's the only identity that exists at Boston College. So <laughs> I see some nodding. I can see some agreement among our panelists. Um, I was fortunate enough to come to campus and uh, do an information session and panel on campus when I was a junior in high school. And I remember stepping foot on campus over the summer. So there weren't a ton of students around besides the ones who were working in admissions. And um, it was a lot of preppy kids wearing like vineyard vines and khakis. And um, the information session was about like the Jesuit education. And I went to a public high school, so I had no idea what was going on. And I think that was really terrifying for me. And I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, and I think when you first look at Boston College, that's one identity that's very strong and very prominent. And it's definitely here on campus, but I think there are also so many other identities that you also find once you get here. So I think especially through the culture clubs that we have here at BC, um, people really find their groups and their homes and again, starting freshman year. So we have, uh, for example, like the Korean Student Association, um, the Black Student Forum. We have all these different clubs that you can join where people are really open in their discussion and reflection about their own experiences. And I found that that makes it a lot less scary because it's suddenly like, oh, I'm not the only one who thinks this way. Um, it's a common theme. And so that's something about Boston College that I was very surprised to find, you know, that open discussion about uh, what BC might be lacking, which is maybe a little bit more diversity um, in thought and education in race, race and ethnicity in lots of different ways. So coming to BC and realizing that, finding people to talk to about that has been really eye-opening and uplifting. So that's a misconception that I had that uh, thankfully has actually worked out okay in my favor. <laughs> For me, um, I'm also like a first generation college student. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, um, grew up in the Bronx, New York. I had like never been around white people like ever. Like I would see them at like malls or like airports, but I, I would never like interact with them. So a PWI was definitely intimidating. Um, but I decided to go to one because in society, like that's, unfortunately, that's what the world looks like. And being a CSOM student, like that's what the corporate world looks like. So I would say that that perception that I had of it, like just being a white preppy school, that was definitely a big expectation I had. Um, and I would say, yes, it is a PWI, but I've found a lot of support in the Ahana community. Um, whether it's the Bowman Ahana Intercultural Center or um, the Montserrat office or the First Gen office. Um, there's so many resources on campus. So that was definitely one of the things I took advantage of, um, more so first semester, just because everything was so new. Um, living on MLE with girls who come from similar backgrounds um, was definitely something that helped me as well. And when it comes to the preppy thing, I don't feel like I've met a lot of people that carry that persona. That is a BC stereotype. Um, but I would say what I've seen in the in my year here, it's more of like a work hard, play hard culture. Like BC students really strive for greatness in the classroom. And then when you get those good grades, you know, you you go out and reward yourself and have some fun. So yeah. 
Great. Sorry, Justin, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add, in addition to everything that Annie and Angie already said, because, of course, those were some of the misconceptions I had. But I guess a, a big one for me would have to be that I thought that Boston College and the entire area surrounding it was completely boring. I looked on Google Maps like I had never been to Boston before, let alone Boston College. So all I was doing was I was looking through Google Maps and watching YouTube videos and I was just freaking out like, oh my God, like I just committed to a school because of a building looks pretty on Google. Like what, what am I doing? Like every time I look something up, all I see is crap restaurants that sell uh, clam chowder and people speaking funny on YouTube and it was blowing my mind. But I can guarantee you when you get here, your mind will be changed. If you're not afraid to go out, because I know I'm not, so many restaurants, so many people, it amazing. And, and the, the great part about it, y'all, is that it's so many colleges in one area to the point where you, there is no lack of, of resources, of people, of networks, connections. So, you know, and the funny part about it is being from a Southern city, they always have a lot of misconceptions. So whenever I post an Instagram picture or a Facebook picture and I'm standing inside the mall or I'm taking a picture downtown, I'm always getting calls like, now where are you spending money at now? Like, why are you always at the mall? Why are you always doing this? But what I actually be doing is networking. You have to go out and you have to meet people. You have to shake hands, well, bump, bump elbows since it's COVID. But you, you can't be afraid to get out and meet people. Like funny, funny story. I always tell Angie's I might as well move in on MLE floor because I'm always over there. Like we are always connecting, networking, meeting people. I promise you, it, it may look preppy looking and boring because of the pretty buildings, gas and hall. We all love it. The brick is beautiful, but it is not boring as boring as it may look. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, man, I have to echo everything everybody said. But yeah, Justin, Justin hit the nail on the head, man. It, it's it. It's what you make it. It's what you make it. Um, It's what you make of it. You know, for me coming here, it was like, yeah, it's preppy. It's white. It's vineyard vines. It's, it's no shill socks and Sperry's, you know, and it's like it's, it's, it's those things. Right. And it's there. We're not going to we're not going to say that's not there. It's there. You know, um, that's an actual aspect of like, you know, J. Crew, like that's a way that people dress here. But my thing, and I think that this echoes the beauty of Boston College in specific particular, is that the experience you have at the school for four years is really what you make of it. It doesn't have to be the prototypical go, you you can you can go to student involvement fair if you want. That you can you can go to student involvement fair and you can join a club. That's exactly that's totally fine like that's something that you're supposed to like you not what you're supposed to do but that's something that you can do right that's one option you have there is also the option you know a, a sub option rather i'm not going to even say that there's no there's a like a, a a second option that's in conflict with that option but a sub option um that you can choose to take up or not is like how justin said boston is at your fingertips right I currently live in a building right now called 2150 Commonwealth Avenue, which is an apartment building right on the side of main campus. And right next to it is the Green Line train that takes you pretty much anywhere in the city, right? And I, I literally, once I get off of it, once, once we're done with the panel, I'm going to meet up with my frat brothers from Boston University and Harvard, right? Socially distanced and safe, of course. Um, I will be meeting with them, right? And, and so it's like, it's really what you make of it. You can go anywhere you want in the city. You can make friends anywhere. But I think what separates BC from even the other schools in the city is that this home base is really a home base. And they want you to feel like it's home, right? From the architecture of the campus, like Justin said, like it's like the, the bricks are beautiful, right? They are, you know, like the campus is beautiful, but it's also, you know, the people here, especially the people and, you know, in the Missions office, like the people on this call, Stephen, Howard, and Danielle, they, and they want you to feel like you're at home past you being accepted to the school. They will reach out to you for four years straight. They really will, right? And the events and the programs and the opportunities here are all meant to make you feel like this is home. But 
you have the ability to, like Justin said, have fun and go away from here as well and, and not have to be subject to what you deem as the stereotype of the school. Once again, you can make this an experience into anything you want it to be. You just have to have the, you just have to develop the courage to do so. Great. Um, so I have another question. Um, so what does support look like coming from BC administration when it comes to supporting Ahana students in instances of racial injustice or discrimination? Um, anybody could talk about it. I know Justin has some experience with our undergraduate student government, um, but yeah, for sure. I, I could take, can I take this one first, possibly? Um, it's not perfect, but I think is any PWI's response to it perfect, right? Is any prestigious PWI where there's something that happens every once in a while, like does it, is it really ever perfect? Um, I know, so my sophomore year, and I'm just like, we are being transparent because we want you guys, like our job is to tell you guys, just help you pushing into making your decision of whether or not this may be the right place for you or not. It's not to convince you that it's all sunshine and rainbows here, right? because that would be a lie. But my sophomore year, um, there was an incident where um, there was racist, racist vandalism in Welch Hall, where um, there was racist graffiti, essentially. And I actually was the person that lived in that hall. And I was the person that took pictures of the event, of the aftermath, right? And I just remember, I did feel isolated because it was just like, I was being reached out to, but at the same time, it was like, are they reaching out to me because they're, they really care? Are they reaching out because they feel like that's what they have to do at this moment? And I will say that while there are certain things that need to be worked on with, with, with um, administrative responses to, to things like racist and like racial incidents, I think that what helped me get through is the way that students banded together and the way that students stuck up for each other and students reached out to me and reached out to each other and called for town halls and called for events and how we still to this day try our best. And, 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 and I will say that it has gotten better since my freshman and sophomore year, holding faculty and staff and administration accountable. There are forms on racial justice now. Um, there is more representation in faculty and staff that are people of color. Um, BC is being recognized as like a haven for first gen students and students of color nowadays. Um, it's actually like an award that we won um, so there is progress. It's not perfect. It's nowhere near perfect, but there is progress. And I do, I will say that students try and I see that faculty and staff are taking, are taking initiative and trying to take the, the necessary steps. It's not there yet hundred percent, but you know, we can get there. We can get to that point. Yeah. I also, oh, go ahead, Angie. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, piggybacking off of Langston, living on MLE, we experienced um, racial vandalism in the beginning of the semester. Um, so like my second semester at BC. Um, and it obviously wasn't easy. Um, I don't wanna deter anyone from living on MLE. I'm living on MLE 2.0 next year. Um, it's a community that I love. But like like since said, we're not gonna like sugarcoat it. We're gonna tell you our experience. And that did happen at the beginning of the semester and we were frustrated for a little bit. But the way that the Ahana community bands together is amazing. Like our entire hallway is covered in posters. Um, we were spoiled on Valentine's Day. I've never gotten so many gifts. Um, and or like calls with alumni boards or calls with the vice president of the university and other administrators who are higher up, they do listen. They do want to do their best to make BC home for us. But at the end of the day, there are students who choose to do things that we don't agree with and BC as a community, as a university does their best to respond. It's not perfect, but it does happen. And, you know, in the midst of it, like half of us were considering transferring. And then we really asked ourselves like, this is a PWI. Why would we transfer to another PWI? 
where there are students who are uneducated or do things for whatever reason they do things. You can't control that, but we decided to stay because of what BC showed us, how the student body, different organizations band together to support us. And that's why I chose to live on MLE next semester as well. There's an MLE 2.0. If you do end up on freshman MLE, you get a 2.0 advisor. Um, so that's something for next year too. And it's a community that was transformative in my experience here that I wouldn't change for the world. Great, yeah. I'm just gonna add on a little bit because I've had the opportunity um, through my role as Black Student Forum President to work a ton with the administration. And I think what it boils down to at the end of the day when it comes to administrative level support is that they do listen. Um, they may tell you no, a lot of the time, but they're really there for the most part to hear you out and at least explain to you the procedures and things that are going on. And um, I guess explain the barriers to some of the change because they do they do things that work towards a, like racial progress or ensuring safety. And it's not really gonna be in line with you. It's like not gonna be in line with, I guess, more of the views of what actually is gonna be seen as like real progress in terms of like, equity and moving towards that, but it'll, it's progress in terms of BC at an institutional scale. Like it's taken me, and I'm sure um, Langston can support me on this, but like it took till our junior year to hear even BC say like Black Lives Matter at the administrative level. Um, and I guess my example of it is after the, the murder of George Floyd, um, I, called a, I called a meeting with all of the Black organization presidents and we compiled a list of demands. Um, and we kind of met extensively on the, where we met to kind of hone in on them extensively and present, pick four to present to the administration to be like, this is what we want. And I spent my like entire summer working with two of the executive vice presidents um, to implementing the change and making sure that it actually happens. And what I will say is they said yes and implemented three out of the four changes that they were looking for. So they moved forward to amending their uh, discriminatory harassment policy. They, um, with with the Boston College Forum for Racial Justice. Um, they listened to us in adding student voices on this committee. So each, every aspect of the Racial Justice Forum has to have two student representatives. Um, I'm blanking out on what the third one was, but they do listen. And it's to the point where like, I can reach out to um, Executive Vice President Tom Mogan right now and probably have a meeting booked for tomorrow within a half an hour. Like he is very receptive. Um, and it's to the level where there is support, it moves slow at a PWI, but um, I would take it nine times out of 10 over a place that just acts like things aren't happening and doesn't really acknowledge them. They've made progress in that aspect. Um, but I guess to change gears a bit to sort of revisit where we were, um, Justin talked a lot about networking and sort of those opportunities that happen here. And we do have uh, two seniors, not counting myself on this panel. and so. One large aspect of the BC community is our alumni network. And I was wondering if Annie and Langston could talk a bit about their interactions that they've had with BC alum throughout their time at BC and maybe how that, uh, if it has influenced their postgrad plans. You got it, Anne, you can go first. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Langston. Um, I think my experience here so far has been largely impacted by my interactions with the alumni network specifically when it comes to internships, jobs, and what I'm going to be doing post-grad. Um, so I'm an econ and computer science double major. I'm going into consulting work after graduation. And when it comes to business recruiting, a lot of it is very fast paced. Um, sometimes you start recruiting a year ahead of time. So as a sophomore, you might be doing junior year recruiting. As a first semester senior, you're applying for full-time jobs. And it's really scary when you don't really know what's going on or what to do. Um, and the alumni network at BC has 
really helped me figure out those steps. So for example, uh, when I was a first semester junior, I went abroad to Dublin, Ireland. And so it was during that semester that I was applying for my junior year internship, which usually leads to your full-time job. So it was just like a lot of interviews, a lot of applications, and I was in a totally different country, different time zone, um, kind of freaking out a little bit. But I remember one of the big companies I applied to was Deloitte. Uh, they are a huge recruiter here at BC. So when I applied and my name was put into the system, um, a BC alum reached out to me and specifically wanted to help me uh, interview. And so he wanted to run through practice interviews with me and tell me what sort of technical information I needed um, to know for the interviews and things like that. And so even though I was in a completely different time zone, he found time during work to um, meet with me over Zoom and make it work. So I think that's just one example of how far the alumni network stretches. You don't even have to be in the United States. They find a way to reach you. They find you. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's been my experience all four years. I've had an internship, very fortunately, every single year since um, I've come to college and I've relied so strongly on the BC network to get all of those. So my junior year internship, uh, I got with the help of Professor Christopher Maxwell in the economics department. It was at a company that he used to work at as a vice president. He was able to tutor me, again, teach me the technical skills for the job. And that's where I'm gonna be working after graduation. So the alumni network, the uh, professor to student relationship. These are all really strong BC identities that have really uh, impacted and shaped my experience here so far. Yeah, so for me, I will say that um, it hasn't materialized into something specifically yet. My plan is to, I'm taking a gap year right now, next year, and currently work, looking for a job for that year. But I do plan on attending law school, um, going to law school the year after. Um, but I will say that for me, what one thing that BC alums have given me is a sense of comfort, um, this sense of not necessarily like, like it's a safety net, but this sense of security because they are so willing to help you and they want to see young eagles succeed and they want you guys to, they want us to reach out to them and stuff like that. Um, so, and like genuinely, um, so that has always, even throughout my process of me figuring out exactly what I want to do, has always given me comfort. So for me, right, it's actually funny because, I, as I said at the beginning of the panel, I was an e-board member of DIOP, which is, like I said, Nahana Men's support group. Um, and my freshman year, uh, I wasn't an e-board member then, but my freshman year, second semester, which was the first semester I was in DIOP, um, I was introduced to our faculty, not our faculty advisor, our graduate assistant by the name of Kazay Thomas. And Kazay basically is what we would call, I think he's considered a triple eagle, meaning that he went to BC for undergrad and he went, he did a JD MBA at uh, BC Law and, uh, and uh, Carroll School of Management. So he was, he's a, he's a JD and he got a master's in business administration. So I, I think that means triple legal, <laughs> but he's a, a graduate. He was our graduate assistant for Diop, and basically he took us to um, a law firm by the name of Goodwin Proctor. And Goodwin Proctor is in Seaport, and he introduced us to his boss, who was a senior counsel lawyer by the name of Wayne Budd. Wayne Budd's also a BC alum who graduated in 1968 because they graduated like in 2014 or something like that. But Wayne Budd is, a, is an older, older guy. And he's also coincidentally one of my fraternity brothers. I didn't know that at the time. And so everything, like as I looked in hindsight, everything just connected because Kaze has always told me like, yo, just like reach out to me whenever you need something. Like I got letters of rec for y'all. Like I really love y'all. I got letters of rec for you guys. What, like I'm, I want to make sure, you know, if I can pull as many people in at Goodwin Proctor as possible, I will do it. Um, you know, like I said, um, fraternity brothers who have gone to BC, people that I've just met that, that are older, um, particularly in my case, older black men who have gone to BC, just telling me to reach out to them and any, like literally telling me, like, cause sometimes you're told to reach out and they really don't mean it. They just saying it because that's what they feel like they're supposed to say. But like, no, like they'll actually hound me and be like, why haven't you reached out to me yet? And so that's just my personal experience with BC alums. And it makes me feel like I'm a, like, like, it really makes me feel good to know that there are people that like, and you, you'll see too, once you guys get on campus, there are people here that want that, that are so like one of their sole purposes is to help y'all and to make sure that you guys do well. So 
that's just kind of like, even though I don't have exactly 100% a plan yet, I do know that whatever happens is going to work out. And that's because of the alumni network here. Great. Um, so yeah, another question. Um, this one's coming from behind the scenes from our very own Paul. Uh, is there an example of anybody stepping outside of your comfort for any sort of community involvement? Comfort zone, sorry. You said for stepping, any advice for stepping out of your comfort zone, Aiden? Any example of a time that you stepped out of your comfort zone to get involved with something? Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, you guys, uh, Justin and Angie, you guys can go first for that one. If you guys want to. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go. Um, so, Coming to a new place was definitely like really hard because like I had never been to BC. I'd never been to Massachusetts. So it was a complete new world. And when it came to stepping out of my comfort zone, those first few weeks were really crucial, at least for me, like when it came to like meeting friends. Um, so it was definitely like a lot of socializing those first few weeks, like whether it was, oh, this person said something in class and I really liked what they said. Do I like go talk to them? Um, always go talk to them. There's, especially freshman year, oh my goodness, first semester, everyone is in the same boat. You're nervous, they're nervous. You're new here, they're new here. Um, everyone is looking for friends. So I would definitely say that getting out of your comfort zone for me just meant talking to as many people as I could and making as many connections as I could because one thing I've noticed about BC is that you can have your core group of friends but you'll also have a friend that you'll like grab coffee with um and you'll have a friend that like you can go study with friends that you can go into Boston with like you're not around the same people every single day your friends can be from diverse groups like I'll meet a friend in Compass which is a mentorship program for first year Ahana students that you should consider joining consider applying for when you get that email um definitely was part of a big part of my experience and where I met someone that I'm really close with today she might not be part of like my main group of friends who I'm living with next year but she's definitely someone that I get coffee with once a week so definitely just meet as many people as you can first the first few weeks so it i had to do a lot of thinking on this question but i know for me uh all throughout high school i was all involved in politics so joining uh ugbc here on campus was not hard for me at all i was easily able to step in and just go straight political mode but if you don't know, BC may not have on-campus fraternities or sororities, but they do have dance teams. And Angie knows because she's one of my close friends, but I cannot dance at all. All I can do is stand up, look handsome in a suit and wave like Obama and that be it. And I can give you a good speech and that be it. But I'm not gonna say the dance team name y'all cause I don't, I don't want no trouble. I'm trying to be peaceful. But I tried out for a dance team. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I gave them a good two and a half days out of the whole week. But I stepped all the way out of my comfort zone for that. But you know what, it was great because I met a lot of new people and I did a little exercise. I don't usually do that, but you know, I tried some new stuff and it was way out of my comfort zone. So now I can finally say, you know, I know a couple of moves and you know, I try to work out two to three days a week now, but that was entirely out of my league, but I still did it though. You know, nothing is wrong with trying. And I didn't make the team, by the way, if I can add that. <laughs> yeah, uh, dang, that's crazy because actually last year I tried out for a dance team on, yeah, I don't know why I did it. I actually do know why I did it, but it was, just it's college you know you try I never would have tried a dance team on any other pretenses uh 
I tried out for Synergy last year and I, I knew I couldn't dance like a hip hop star, but then I really knew I couldn't dance like a hip hop, like I do hip hop dance when I, when I tried out and didn't make it. Um, so basically, I guess for me, I'm not gonna say it was a certain instance of me going out of my comfort zone. Um, it was more so it's been um, four years of me going out of my comfort zone increasingly. Um, looking at where I was as a freshman, uh, it's actually funny because I was thinking today about where I was when I was 19, 20 years old and to where I am now as a 22 year old. Um, I was shyer. Um, I'm still pretty shy, believe it or not. Um, I was shyer. I was, you know, more to myself, more um, reclusive. And just over time, that started to kind of go away a little bit more and go away a little bit more. And I started to reach out to more people and started to kind of just you know, tell my story more. And I think that 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 it all comes back to you just being honest with yourself. I'm sorry about that. Um, being honest to yourself and telling your story. And um, as long as you do that, then I'm pretty sure that like eventually you'll be able to, um, you'll in your own way, in your own time, you'll be able to come out of that comfort, come out of that comfort zone just by being true to yourself and just letting it take its course. I think I have one very prominent example in mind in terms of when I came out of my comfort zone um, for something at BC. And that was actually related to the student missions program um, and panels specifically. So I started giving panels my second semester freshman year. And I remember so vividly the first panel I ever sat on was in this big room in Dublin. There were 250 people packed in and Chris O'Brien was standing up in the front. We all sat in these like director style chairs at the bottom of an auditorium. I was the only freshman and I was so scared. And the first question that he asked me out of the blue, he just went, Annie, do you have friends here at BC? In front of all these 250 people. And again, I'm only like a semester into college. I had no idea what was going on. It was very traumatizing. Um, but at the same time, he, Chris O'Brien is one of our uh, admissions officers here. He really pushed me to reflect on my experience so far at BC in so many ways. So that was a very shocking question to be asked, but also at the same time, over the course of my four years, I've done so many information sessions with him. And I think I've developed and become a better public speaker, um, a better communicator and a better friend because I've been able to listen to um, my fellow classmates talk about their different experiences and share my own. And I think that that was me stepping out of my comfort zone because one, that was a really horrifying experience to have as a freshman, but also because I wanted to join a club and do something where I could show my face to prospective students and maybe help ease some of the misconceptions that I had coming in. So we talked earlier about like the misperceptions that we had. Um, I personally thought there weren't a lot of uh, signs of diversity at BC and everyone was exactly the same. And I thought maybe if I could do something to alleviate just a little bit of that, um, maybe it could help a prospective student out here. And I think that's something that we can all agree with as we sit on this panel right now. Um, but that's one example of community involvement where definitely push myself out of my comfort zone, but definitely for the better as well. Great. Um, so yeah, as we're, as we're winding down, thinking about sort of when I, or why I decided to attend BC, there are, like full disclosure, there was a significant period of time as a high school senior where I, I did not want to go to BC. Um, I'm like, my mom works here. It's, I, it's in my hometown, five minutes from my house. I want to be different. I want to spread my wings. But I, I like attended this Eagle for a Day program where you get paired with a prospective student. And I was following this woman around. We went to her, like, her biology class, and then which was cool. And then the last class that we went to was a creative writing class, which was taught by um, Thomas Kaplan Maxwell, Maxfield, TKM. And it was not what I expected. The class was in this dorm. I think we were in Vute and we were all just crammed into this uh, one student's common room, eating Thai food and like workshopping creative writing. And at that moment, I'm like, wait, this is not at all what BC, what I thought BC would be like. I thought I, I, thought I was gonna go to Oberlin and get this really out there experience. Um, and I was like, wait, I can get that at BC. So I was just like, you know what, that, that's it. And so I went home and I committed to BC that night because um, it really kind of shifted my perception. So as we wind down, I was wondering if people could share sort of that moment for them, um, what sort of pushed them over the edge, what what really uh, was the last straw where you're like, you know what, this is the place that I could see myself attending. Uh, 
Oh, um, I'll go first. Um, what pushed me over the edge to attend here was there was a thing that pushed me over the edge, and then that was a thing. I guess that would say that I like I think I made the right decision. Like there was a time where I was pushed over the edge, and then there was a time where I knew that I made the right decision. And honestly, that me knowing I made the right decision didn't really happen until I got to campus. Um, wouldn't what I I like. So the reason I chose BC, quite frankly, it was on paper. It was a good school. Um, you know, it was a good school that could provide me the best opportunity. So for me, um, coming from New Orleans, uh, coming from the deep South, I have a family, my mom and my dad both um, went to historically black colleges. Um, they both went to HBCUs and then my brother also went to an HBCU and I was um, signed up to go to Morehouse. Actually, I was gonna go to Morehouse. <laughs> and basically, um, that didn't happen because I was, I eventually became a choice between BC and Morehouse and both of them were similar financial aid packages. So it was gonna be pretty much the same, but the difference was I wanted a new experience. Um, I wanted a different experience. I wanted something different from what my parents had experienced. No, just like there's nothing wrong with an HBCU experience at all. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, but I wanted, I wanted something that I didn't see my entire childhood. So, I chose BC because of that. And on top of that, um, BC as it is still today, it's one of the best universities in America. Um, so just knowing that I got into a prestigious institution and um, be able to come out in a pretty good place, you know, as far as like opportunities for networking and job opportunities and stuff like that was also big to me. Um, I didn't know I made the right decision until after a few times where I was tested tested to to the brink of saying man is this the right decision um i knew it was the right decision when you know i started to find comfort in my professors and um you know i had professors um i had professors that uh like Professor Rhonda Frederick, um, Professor Allison Kersin, Jonathan Howard, um, who are um, AADS professors, black professors who made me feel comfort and made me feel comfortable on campus. Um, it was at those moments where I felt that I was, um, I was, I was in the right place. Um, just being able to feel comfort and knowing that somebody, an adult on campus in this difficult campus cared about me um, and said, Langston, you don't have to compromise. You don't have to quit this education, this, 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 this beautiful education that you can get because you feel uncomfortable. Like essentially without, in, in so many words and without them actually saying it, they said, we're gonna help you feel comfortable at this school because you deserve to be here. And it was at that, it was at those particular moments. It wasn't a, a specific moment to correct myself, but it was those particular moments um, throughout my four years that made me say like, hey, I can, I can stick this out. This, this may be a good decision. For me, it was rather difficult. Um, I had never been to BC, had never talked to anyone from BC. I obviously was interested in BC because I applied, but I had never been here. I'd never been to Massachusetts. So definitely a different experience when deciding between schools if you've never even been there. So Howard Singer was my admissions counselor and we basically texted throughout my entire decision process. I think I committed like two or three days before the deadline, before May 1st. Um, and for me, I came to BC because of the location. I wanted a campus. I wanted somewhere to call home, but I wanted to be close to a city. Being from New York City, um, that was definitely something I knew I would miss. So the location was best of both worlds. Um, when it came to campus, it looked beautiful on the pictures. Um, their financial aid package was amazing. I came in through the OTE program, so I had to do that over the summer. And I don't think I knew I made the right choice until like the end of my first semester, just cause like in the moment, if I'd never been here, like I didn't know if it was the right choice. And 
I, I was definitely concerned coming in just because this was a completely new place, but I was sitting in my Black Lives Matter meets Me Too class. It's um, a complex problems and engaging questions course that you guys should definitely look into. Um, those professors are amazing resources for students. But I was sitting in that class next to my friends um, with these amazing professors. And I think that was the moment where it was like, okay, this is where I'm meant to be. This is where I'm meant to succeed. And regardless of what happens, I know I made the right choice in that moment. Um, because when I imagined my college experience, I imagined learning about something that I was passionate about, learning from people that I could look up to and sitting around peers who can challenge my thinking. And in that complex problems and enduring questions course, I got that. I think for me, I have those moments where I tell myself, I know this is the place for me, literally, if not every day, every other day. Every time I get to meet someone new, uh, have a conversation with someone who doesn't look like me, who's not from the same place that I am, people who are from the same place that I am. That's a big plus, Langston. Like when I met him and he was like, I'm from down south too. I was like, yes, this is where I belong then. But whenever I get to meet somebody, and you know, just have those conversations with them and my professors, and you know, just listen to all these brilliant minds and how so many smart people can be in one place. I tell myself, like, this is where I need to be at. Like, it it is some really some truly amazing people here, and you know, I I I, I see where exactly where I fit in every day. I'm right at home. So I, I have my moments every single day, especially when I try new restaurants, because, ooh. I agree with what everyone says. It's not just about what's pushed us to come here, but also what's pushed us to stay here. And it's those little things every single day, right? Where it's just a confirmation that this is the correct place for us. And it's the professors and the people that you meet and become friends with. And the alumni network has played a big part in my personal experience, but everyone has their own little things. But I think that's something to consider as well. You know, logistically for me, BC was a great choice. But once I got here, I found out it was really the place that was meant for me because I wanted to stay here. So that's something to consider too. Maybe once you get here, that's when you'll know for sure. Great. So I, I think we pro provided some great insight today. I know uh, the four panelists had some great stories and experiences to share. I know we ran a bit over, so I'm going to do the wrap up logistics very quickly. Um, I'm right now sharing a screen with all of the, uh, the contact information. Um, just need to, one second, sorry. Cool. Um, so thank you again to everybody for joining and also congratulations on your acceptance to Boston College. Um, this event is part of the Experience Boston College Admitted Students Series, which is for admitted students. Um, and it will lead up to the May 1st deadline. Um, you guys all signed up for tonight's event through the applicant status portal. So you are probably very familiar with that. Um, you can sign up for additional events there as well. Um, the next event as a part of this series will take place this coming Saturday, April 24th, with a session on the Boston College residential life ex and dining services experiences. Um, it will be at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then there will also be a panel uh, or webinar from the Office of First Year Experience with the Office of First Year Experience at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, each session will last an hour and they will all be recorded and posted on the, uh, the gallery page. Um, this is our final AHANA student experience event. Um, so this group won't have any other chances to be sort of hit, sitting in front of you and talking to you um, sort of in this forum, but you can always contact us at this contact information that's gonna be right in front of you. Um, you could also reach out to your admission counselor who signed your application. Um, and this will be on your applicant status portal and all of us, as well as the staff at the Office of Undergraduate Admissions will be more than happy to help you navigate right up until that May 1st deadline. So um, yeah. We wish you guys all the best in terms of figuring out your college home for the next four years. Um, you all probably have a ton of choices because 
obviously this is a very competitive class, but we hope that Boston College fits in there somewhere. Um, but again, our whole, our whole philosophy is giving you the information that you need to make the best decision for you um, at this moment. And so with that, uh, congratulations again, and I wish you all the best.